What's going on, guys? And welcome back. We hit the month of March, and we have the Avengers versus X-Men, and probably one of the craziest months when you look at cards, abilities, and them being extremely plug and playable. Every card seems awesome, but on top of that, we have two cards coming out Tuesday that are going to dramatically shift deck building and the meta with Pixie and Hope Summers. We have the iconic War Machine coming out. And today, Alex and I are going to give our rankings on all the cards, break down synergies, and what you need to know heading into this new season. We're going to talk about that all today and more on this episode of the Snapchat. And as always, I am joined by Mr. Alex Kocha. We've got our brand new month of March, man. A brand new season, the end of Infinity Conquest this season. How was the February season, the sunset of it, and how are you doing, bud? I'm doing great, Cozy, and uh, man, this past season, we got a lot to talk about. It was a wild one in a way that, like, I think there were some unexpected performers and some other cards did not perform quite as expected. But overall, like, I actually enjoyed the past season. I did, and, uh, you know, I found a rekindling of love for, for Loki and Galactus, which I know sounds crazy, and I'm already tilting people out listening, but those are cards that, like, Cozy, I don't know about you, but, like, I often felt bad playing, and I almost never played when they were actually legitimately overtuned and powerful, because, like, no one wants to watch us play that, right? We yeah. always had to brew other stuff. Stuff. but now that they've kind of fallen off on popularity i'm like you know what i'm gonna play some damn loki i'm gonna rip some galactus i've been having fun yeah i haven't played like a lot of those cards uh like loki i just haven't played in forever but uh and that's because yeah once we've done like the video to highlight them they don't change and, and especially like decks like that right like it's kind of the same with high evo it's like they don't really change what they do and so it's kind of the same video or whatever so yeah i haven't done loki in, in forever man uh i went into infinity conquest my friend and I beat the game. Uh, I can retire happy. Not only did I feel like I beat the game when I got Pixel Coulson just from a, a cash. I was like over the moon. But now he's got the shoes on. He's got the infinity border. So I've done. I'm sunsetting. I, I think I might just retire here, you know? That's beautiful. Like when I, I first of all, amazing video. I watched it and I was like, I, I okay, I was like, he's probably gonna get the Infinity Conquest win. He has to. He's not gonna take us all the way to round five and then lose and miss out on this beautiful Colson. Close. And then when it was up on the screen, I was so I'm like, I gotta get it. I gotta get it. Like I yeah. have to as well. So it's my next one. I'm targeting that Agent Colson as well. We can be brothers in Colson. Oh, dude, would love it, man. Well, we are uh we've got I, listen, I, I feel like we say it all the time, but can we can we agree this season? that we have to talk about here, the car potential is, is absolutely bonkers. I mean, like last season, we had things like kind of targeted toward discard and, and some Thanos love. The season before that, kind of all over the place, very mixed bag for archetypes. This season is the season of plug and play fantastic cards. Like it, it is so many cards back after back that are going to work in a lot of decks. I was doing my star ratings and I had to like hold myself back on some of these because they all seem kind of cracked in their own way and quite honestly can't remember a season like this since maybe the high evil one back in the day bud but super excited to talk about that on this side we have a long conversation usually my favorite video but what are we talking about on your side of the snapchat those will be giving our final rankings for the cards of february 2024 it was a banger month with a lot of surprises and we we're giving our final thoughts We'll also be talking about the top 10 token shop buys for those that are still looking to get the best value for their tokens in Marvel Snap, buying competitive cards that can help you rank up and find success. And then finally, as always, our Snapchat mailbag. What's going on, guys? Pardon the interruption. Today's video is sponsored by Tippus Tower Probatio. You can dive right into this groundbreaking CCG that revolutionizes strategic card battles with its unique pick and face. Guys, if you love card building, you're going to love the game. There's over 300 different cards to choose from. To really design a deck that feels right for you, you hop right into the action and you actually get to see your opponent's cards and you can ban one of them. It could be their favorite card or one you personally don't like. After that, you'll proceed into the game and you'll be given the chance to pick between three different heroes and then the game starts. Really offers a different take on the card battle system. The fan and pick phase offers a unique advantage over traditional card games and allows for richer strategic planning. You can also turn the tide with tower power. You can empower the tower to flip the game and really give you a bigger advantage. Empower your towers with unique hero skills and one powerful move and change the course of the entire battle. But there's way more than just the unique gameplay, 300 cards and the pick band phases. There's also friendly battles. Now, lastly, guys, this is pretty unique, but essentially, if you want to try out the game, you're guaranteed a free trial as a first day login reward. Essentially, uh, you get a one-time chance here to give yourself the ability to copy other players' decks and play games for a limited time with all the cards, even if you don't have them. 
Really cool mechanic to test everything out and see if you like it. If you guys want to check out this new card game, you can check out the link down in the description or in the pinned comment section. And another huge thank you to Tippis Tower of Provato for sponsoring today's video. Well, Alex, I, you know, I felt like I've been doing pretty good lately in life. Like, I, I've, I've been trying to get a little healthier, you know. The new year happened. I was trying to get a bit bit healthier. Been running a, a tad more, right? Been, uh, been maybe going to the gym here and there. And then I got knocked down a peg, uh, well, a couple days ago because because of this, man. Did you did you see this variant? Have you seen this absolute 20-pack Chad Killmonger? And not only that, we have not had a good Killmonger variant really at all. And then we get this. What is? What am I supposed to do with this? I mean, honestly, on like it looks exactly like me. I almost sued Second Dinner for like uh, like taking my likeness and using it in their product without recognition of it. I, I was on stream and I was like, "Do I buy this?" I was like, "Yeah, buy it." I'm like, "I can't. It's so intimidating. I can't. I'll I'll never look like this." And I was oh like, "No, gosh. no, no, no. I'm getting the fantasy one that's coming." Out. Everyone's like, "Boo!" I'm like, "No, I'm gonna get the fantasy <laughs> ultimate. I'm not gonna spend the two, the twelve hundred. Everyone's like, "Boo!" It's I, saucy. I, it's definitely a fan favorite. I gotta tell you. Art Germ is a great artist and he also makes the the, the sauciest uh, uh, variants is the best way to put it. A lot of great ones came out during that drop and uh we got a good season man we got a good season we did not see any new features or anything in the dev video hoping that that was just kind of like a we, we didn't have anything planned for that at the time being however which i knew this guys i was i was uh i had the fortunate uh, opportunity to be uh, uh featured in there and I, I was like looking at the script i'm like oh i don't have any lines on anything new coming on, on that but uh either way man it's gonna be a, a, a fantastic season there's so many places to start and we got to start with the, the season pass card. Alex, dare I say, Hope Summers. We've seen changes on just about every card this month. This is the one we have to start with, obviously, though. Hope Summers is a three-cost, four-power card now. A few changes there. The ability, after you play a card where she is played, you get plus one energy on your next turn. Obviously, if you play multiple cards, you're going to be able to have multiple energy stacking on each other to play for the next turn. This is going to be a fun, this is going to be a fun final rankings uh, between us two, especially next month when we look back, because this is going to be tough. But we start with the season pass card. Hit me with the early impression star rating. I'm so nervous because everything I've started in the last two months has been literally the polar opposite, right? Like it's been, I'm like, so like for me, I look at this and I'm like, this has to be, and I know I said this in the past, but this, I, this cannot not be a five-star card, right? Like there's no way this is not a five-star card. This is basically legitimate insane power creep over the nerfed elsa bloodstone and it's like it's so unbelievably good there's no way it's not five stars yeah so uh, okay uh when i was going through all the cards and giving my star ratings like i i was giving out a couple fives and i'm like oh man i gotta so i i have her at 4.5 i have her right right there just uh just a half a star off uh from, from giving her the perfect rating for like one or two small small reasons but my god this is a car that like even if you don't typically get season passes like you would get this one and feel good about it moving forward it almost reminds me a lot of uh something like miss marvel where she just goes into the deck no one's really gonna do that role i mean you have like you know whatever electro things like that but no one does that role she superfies an archetype even more so and she is just truly insanely plug and playable so i agree buddy we, we got to start here season pass card Feels good to have a, a solid one after Black Swan and Scar. Where do we start here, man? Where do we start with the synergies? Where do you like Hope Summers the best? There's a lot to kind of break down here. First off, I want to make a statement. I don't think Cozy should be allowed to get 0.5 anymore. Like, you should be going 4, you should be going 5. I need you to stick to your gun, sir. No. You're, you want this to be a 5-star car. I know you do. We, you don't want to see 5. I, you know what? But you're welcome to come to this side. You can come to the light side and do the half stars they feel good and you can kind of like if you're not sure you kind of just go in the middle I, I know you usually like you're a five star one star kind of guy but alex <laughs> go ahead and tell me on it why do you like her at the five stars what do you think about synergy i just think synergistically i mean she's gonna do everything that uh it, it i just don't see how this car could be bad like when i was thinking about this card and trying to come up with like deck designs in advance i was like this is very uh like analogous to the original also bloodstone the kind of cards that could be played there, moved, pumped up, right? Like the Jeffs, the Nightcrawlers, the Visions, right? Silk. The kind of cards that will get in there, get out, and allow you to repeatedly force this effect. 
It's like having Corvus that you can proc at will, but not actually discarding cards. It's like having Electro, where you can play into it, and maybe even not just burst by one energy, but by two energy. Like, you can burst by multiple energies. Yeah. We haven't had that before, yeah. right? It's like you're cheating two men. Like, it's crazy. You'd have to, like, have multiple time stones in your hand somehow to be able to do that or whatever, right? So... I think the potential for this card is absolutely massive. And I'm going to lead our conversation with, I think the mobile cards, like the silky smooth style decks, the ones that have those, the mobility, I think will be the ones to obviously benefit. Yeah, and I think there's a reason that we haven't seen an Elsa uh, buff is I think not only she really won't need one a ton after being in this kind of archetype because it fits so well, but we still want her to get one. And I think it'll happen when we get the monthly reset. That's going to be my, my prediction here. No question. That playstyle is super fun, and, it, and it's just, it flows well. There's a lot of options. So right off the bat, for sure, man, like Nightcrawler Jeff, as you've said, those are just going to work with Elsa Bloodstone and Hope Summers, ones that you want to play all in the one location and continue to get the effect. Kitty Pride, obviously being probably one of the better synergized cards because what's really cool is you essentially, you're using that cost to guarantee that you get to always play Kitty the next turn for free, which is even just that alone is going to be amazing, especially if Elsa's on the board. You can stack that up, get it really high, and, and who knows, man, the return of the Shuri Kitty Taskmaster deck, I think, is going to come full force with this, no question. Uh, what's really cool is Hope Summers is, is, is really damn powerful in Marvel. Really powerful, and we've got her, we've got War Machine this month. We have a lot of iconic kind of cards and characters. I think people have asked me before which ones I'm waiting for, and I had War Machine on there. Uh, a, a good chunk of the time just pumped to see all these cards coming to the game buddy uh but yeah no question really good synergy there that is going to be where I, I i think a lot of people are going to lean into for hope summers whenever she comes out it's going to be a really cool week because there's going to be so many decks to try right like she's going to elevate archetypes and then she's going to open up her own buddy um what i see is, is what we've leaned into a bit and, and that is just the ramp option of having the sixes do their thing right we got to remember she's a three cost card which is why i have her at 4.5 so you're only going to get a couple of turns here where you can really take you know advantage of that energy but man we've seen it before playing sixes and playing those uh those fives even early it is a massive massive swing talk about some of those cards that in that category that you're just like you're pumped to include with hope buddy the first deck that i have designed that i can't wait to showcase on tuesday the core like focus of it is hope summer's on three rescue on four into dr doom odin like Ooh. it's it's actually incredible because you got that verticality of the uh the, the rescue while also going extremely wide yep. and it's like and you're just playing on top of the hope summers anyway with rescue right it's a little predictable sure but ain't nobody gonna be expecting rescue and i think that this card is gonna bring out some of that the opportunity to have these high impact four like four cost plays like, if you think about what traditional ramp was doing, like Electro, you often didn't even put four costs in your deck. Yep. You often tried to skip it, skip to the vision, skip to the whatever. But with Hope Summers, you want a high impact four, so you can skip five. It's a different kind of ramp. So I really like that, and I was leading towards a rescue combination to get some verticality. Uh, first, I commend you for avoiding to say the word foreplay. I can't tell you how many times that uh, that has happened. Uh, there's a lot of dangerous words. Just dark, hawk alone the amount of times i have to really make sure i uh nail that pronunciation um yeah dude you hit it on the head i used to say that all the time you hit the nail on the head there though uh in general i feel like what's cool about her is that if you put her into a deck there's only 12 you know cards in there it's like even it doesn't there's a lot of decks that if you draw hope it's like fantastic like you are making up ground with her anyway if you didn't get one of your other cards because Maybe if you couldn't play a card on three, uh, you know, you have a lot of high cost cards in the hand, right? That's when you can drop the dooms and whatnot. I agree. Love that. Love that spot for her. Bro, I think also the the people that love the, the tried and true decks of, and I, you, I know you were a big fan for a very long time of this, but the Infinite She-Hulk decks, I mean, the fact that we can now remove magic from not the deck, but the equation of the must-have, where we can reliably skip turn six she completely takes over the the versions of the deck that had psylocke in there right and now you can full float that she hulk play infinite down same turn Th that's awesome alone you can't play infinite down on five right because obviously to ramp into that you'd need to play something down you know on four so that wouldn't work with infinite's kit necessarily uh but it just i feel like it adds a lot of fuel to sunspot and, and 
skipping turns with energy so that your other guys pop off like Cyclops. The high Evo Infinite deck, I think, is a natural home for hope. Yeah, anytime you can really take advantage of that extra energy, then absolutely you want it. And the other thing that I think gets missed about the high Evo style decks is that um, the turn six skip is actually when you're most vulnerable. And if you can avoid that, if you can cut that like that negative component of that deck out completely and allowing you to do what you want to do in six turns, then you're not getting caught off guard with the Snow Guard Hawk or the Reality Stone or a Legion or whatever, right? Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely, Cozy. There's a lot of uh, potential there. And especially because of, you know, just Hella and things like that out there right now, like just having Infinite Shield, these big, big power cards to really compete uh, is awesome. Uh, and, and, dude, you can even maybe, maybe get Shuri into the mix. I mean, there's having that one extra energy is going to really start to build up over time. And uh, another, you know, avenue, actually, I can give you the floor real quick. Anywhere else for you before I kind of finish off? With the last couple of synergies i have two more archetypes i love yeah i, I don't want to steal the thunder because i'm sure you might end up talking about destroy i think destroy could actually take advantage of this to some degree uh although they have energy ramp in x23 i think that what you might see is uh like an opportunity to use hope summers build up additional power but then as you play cards into hope summers like you can play hope summers deadpool venom and now all of a sudden you have all that extra energy. You can play Zola out early, not Zola, sorry, you probably play your Null out early to allow for a later Zola. Um, you get a more reliable capability of getting Deadpool out. Uh, Cause like, listen, you want to destroy that X-23, but that bounce on X-23 can be a little bit of a betrayal at times, right? Yeah. So I do think that uh, that there could be some potential there because the three, four stat line feeds the Venom enough. And then that extra energy, I feel like Destroy does make good use of it. Yeah, I was thinking about Destroy, and then I was like, well, you don't want to kill Hope Summers. But then I was thinking about some other things that you could do in there for sure. Like, also combining them two is also cracked. Like, if you have X-23 down, you play Killmonger in the Hope Summers lane. Hey, fantastic. You just got plus two energy on that. Where I love to see it the most, or where I can see Destroy working out, to your point there, is Nimrod decks, man. Like, Nimrod loved Psylocke. But where this has the advantage is you don't really destroy a lot till turn six. Like, you're kind of just trying to get the Nimrod out there. And, and that's where I think you can really pop off with Hope Summers, right? Because you can just immediately get the, the Nimrod out early, very dependently, and, and then kind of go from there. So, yeah, I, I do like Destroy there. I want to see if it can stack up and, and, again, work its way into a slot now. I, I think Destroy and Discard, we could both agree, are, are probably the most tight list these days. Uh, so definitely be interesting in there. Bro, I think, just bottom line, I mean, how have we not talked about it? I just, I've been doing a lot more than lately. Surfer, surfer, surfer. Is this going to cut Sarah from surfer decks, or is it just going to be an awesome replacement that if you don't get Sarah, great. You have another chance to be able to play multiple cards on turn six. You know how big that is, man. This is massive now that we can do that reliably and fix a core issue. But never mind that in Surfer Dex. She's also a three cost, right? So it's two birds, one stone. I actually had given some thought about Surfer, and I haven't quite figured that list out yet. Because if you think about it, Sarah's a discount of three energy on turn six, right? What do you play on turn five that, that essentially pr provides you with three energy? And I couldn't figure that out because you're playing a three drop and a two drop or a three drop and two ones to get to that. Because if with Sarah, you're playing three three drops, right? So that's three net energy saved. And so, like, I haven't figured that deck out yet, but maybe with Kitty Pride, with with Elsa, with something, with something else, with a different, complete style of Surfer yeah. deck, you can generate enough value to make it worthwhile. Because she's also like playing Sarah is it's it's great for turn six, but it's actually a really weak body on turn five. Yeah. And I think that like Surfer, any deck likes to put up power. And there's actually been uh, a lot of people, including myself, who have tried to take Sarah out of Surfer as a whole and play more high impact five drops, even arrows or spider uh, womans based on the meta with Thanos. And so like Sarah has had these moments of being replaceable. So I'm not quite there yet deck building wise, Cozy, but I think you might be onto something. I mean, essentially gone are the days, the pure surfer decks. Like they work, they can, you know, you still got the rogues, you have counters, they can pop off. But I do agree. Uh, for me, my thought was like, you know, I just did this Patriot surfer deck where it's like, man, even seven energy on there where you can get the lat off with a three cost can feel really strong. There's a couple twos in there with Sinister and stuff like that. I'm going to talk about that deck uh, more when we get to some other cards here. But yeah, just her being a three cost kind of fits right in there. We could have another Mobius situation where it's like, do you even, you know, it's a three cost, but kind of it's just going to work as a plug and play card in other decks. Uh, but naturally wanted to bring that up. Uh, and then for me, man, as I started to think about some other options, 
you know, we lost, we took a big hit with Darkhawk, obviously, which uh, you guys, you can see on our topics, we actually don't have the OTA review, so we can, you know, kind of quickly go through a couple things here. But Darkhawk taking that massive hit also, in turn, kind of hurt Ravona in some of her more core builds, I would say. Uh, and so I kind of look forward to seeing if we can get back what the, this old style discount disrupt deck that I used to have that was using Green Goblin and Hobgoblin with Ravona with energy cheating. And I love the idea of popping down Green Goblin on top of your hope, getting the bonus, junking their side. Next turn, that gives you an energy so you can play Hobgoblin into her lane. And then you get another energy the next turn, all while killing a lane completely. I, I think it's a really cool idea. That's cool. I like that idea of using the goblins to basically uh, keep that space open for Hope Summers while also impacting your opponent's board. It's basically like what the movement style cards like Vision and Nightcrawler and Jeff do. They get out of the way, except you're going on the other side of the board, right? Which is kind of interesting, right? Keeping that space open, I think, is valuable for someone like Hope Summers. On the note of Ravona, though, it's, it's funny you mention that because the Galactus deck that I had worked on, I just released a video on, it was a deck that I was like, I could cut Ravona from this deck. And I was like, I was wondering about, I'm like, you know what? No, I'm keeping it for the goblins. And what I did is this. With Ravona, I added Daredevil. And the reason why I did this was because if I can, if I get Ravona out early as a 2-3 body, that's great. That allows me to play Hob on turn four. But if I don't get Ravona out, I probably got Daredevil out, which is nice because then I can guarantee my, my Hobgoblin hit on turn five. Yeah. And so if I couldn't get it out early, I can get it out reliably with the, the Daredevil. And that's kind of the, the copium that I went through. <laughs> with yeah. Ravona, but you're right. She's getting that Darkhawk nerf did impact Ravona quite significantly. I mean, to your point though, it's a great point at that. Really, Galactus decks, right? Like uh, Electro is is always the core because it's like, hey, I'm gonna take that energy. Wave is great, but then we always have to remember, right? Like you're giving them the option to wave out too, so they can do the Doom, they can do whatever to just stop your Galactus. I feel like Hope is exactly what Galactus wants, right? Because Galactus can have Wolverine, it can have the Goblins, it has that synergy package already, and what do you want to do with Galactus? You want to play him on another lane anyway, so playing in a Hope's lane, it's like, hey, sign me up, you don't really care about filling up the lane that you're already trying to do, and you can get Galactus out. So I do see Galactus also getting some love anytime we get ramp uh, with Hope Summers. That's fair, absolutely fair. Uh, he loves ramp, and the other thing that Galactus loves is coming by surprise, and I think that Hope Summers doesn't necessarily like sell a Galactus deck. Like you used to see like, oh, Wolverine into Wave. You know, you know what's up. You yeah. know what's up every single time, right? Yeah. Hope Summers, though, especially since Hope Summer is gonna have like very, very like a wide ap applicable play, right? Like it's gonna go in so many different archetypes. It's very hard to see Hope Summers say, that's a Galactus player. You just you just can't. Yeah, and that's a that's really a great point. Cause honestly, that's one of the biggest things around her is she is gonna be like Wave in that instance. Like but even even more different, right? Because like Wave, you really play like a lot of high cost cards and you can kind of deduce like, okay, Galactus is an option. Hope kind of likes cheap cards in a way too because you can, you know, you want to fill her lane out. So I, I would say this is a great disguise for not only Galactus, but then all these other decks that we just kind of talked about, which is where I see like these kind of six drop bombs being really helpful because they're not going to know what you could have in the deck. Could you pop out the Doom early and get priority and then all of a sudden you can just easy a Lyoth, right? Do you then play Doom on that or Odin on that? Do you blob? Do you... There's just a lot there and, and I truly think it's going to take... Uh, I don't need to know if you should get her. You, you definitely should get her but to see the best decks, it's probably going to be the course of the season as we flavor up some new builds and and, and I, I, I'm telling you now, she's going to be very important in Marvel Snap moving forward. No, absolutely. Like, I again, I'm going to say it again, and I'm just going to curse this card even more. There's no way this card is not fantastic. There's just no way because it's, it has such a wide range of decks. And honestly, the effect is so unbelievably powerful. And we have a lot of tools already in Marvel Snap that we can use to activate this effect to good uh, effectiveness. <laughs> Which is kind of a funny sentence to say, but you guys know what I mean, right? You guys know what I mean. This card is going to slap. Yep. No question, man. So Hope Summers is the season pass card, but. Tuesdays now are absolutely crazy at the start of the season because we have not one, we got two cards, Alex, coming out. We have a ton of cards coming out this week. Uh, and so that takes us to our next card in the conversation, also coming out on Tuesday. I've seen a lot of mixed opinions. I think people are going to have, uh, continue to have mixed opinions on it. But if you don't know, Pixie is a two cost, one power card. She has the ability of on reveal, shuffle the costs of all the cards in your deck that started there and alex i am i am pumped to talk about pixie i'm gonna i'm gonna 
open the floor. Don't say anything except the rating. What do you give Pixie? Oh, man. I, I want to just say the number, but here's the problem. I literally wrote down in my notes, impossible to star rate. That's okay. what I wrote. I don't know, man. Yep. I don't know. Yep. Like, I honestly, like, I'll, I'll give a five. I'll take a chance on a yeah, five hey. star. I'll take a chance on a one star. I am not the kind of person that will shy away from an opinion. Yep. Dude, I don't know. This is one of those cards. I'm like, I have no idea how it's going to shake up in the meta. Like, it, it could be five, it could be one, and nowhere in between, I have no idea. We've only had a couple cards like that, and most of them tend towards the higher end, right? I think Havoc yeah. kind of went to the lower end after Nico. some while. But yeah, Nico was a big one in that, right? Here's the deal. Agreed. My notes, I have three star, five star, nothing else. Like, it's either one of those. So, I, and I'll tell you kind of the argument for both and why I see her being either the next Loki, which is the title, legit the next Loki, or not that great or at least a three cost card with like a really fun new archetype let's start here guys pixie is going to open up some fun in marvel snap i mean if you like to have chaos if you like to enjoy uh, a deck style that does not exist and you want to make a new archetype of a deck pixie is going to be the card for you i can tell you that no question even more so than hope summers which is kind of crazy i thought maybe they should even space these two cards out because they're both doing something so dramatically insane but let's go in and break down her synergies and where we see her fit. So uh, let's start with the argument for three and five. So for the three side of things, she's shuffling the cost. I want people to know that, right? So it, you need to not get too greedy in your deck design. And if players can do that, I think they're going to access a much better pixie, right? Because if you put all these six costs and then Wasp and Yellow Jacket and they're shuffling around, your Infinite's going to trade with your Doctor Doom and your Doctor Doom's going to trade with your, you know, Ultra, whatever the heck, right? And then it's just still six cost. And then maybe your wasp and your yellow jacket swap. That's where I see people kind of going too far into it, if that makes sense. But then Alex on the other side of things, right? If you can just create a value list where you've got Dr. Doom and a life, maybe in like a lockdown deck, and you can throw in a wasp, you can throw in a couple one cost nightcrawlers, Jeffs, and then uh, a couple synergy cards we'll talk about. Hey, a two cost Dr. Doom, that's a game winner. That's a game winner. You playing all these on turn six, turn five, they don't know it, game winner. You're snapping alone. I'm telling you, the reason she's going to be so good, especially in Conquest, but in just general play, is that she's going to be great at playing her and then bluff snapping. People are not going to know. It's like the peak all over again. I think that's going to be her best trait. It's it's a good point. The ability to snap with, like, you can't snap before you play Pixie, but when you snap after, your opponent's shaking in their boots, right? They're like, oh, they're going to turn three Galactus me, right? It's like, yep. it's kind of crazy what you can do. Um, but yeah, this, this card has so much potential, but it's so completely wild, just wild. And uh, I got a point, though, and you're sipping a little bit of grape juice over there, because if you think that people aren't going to be greedy as hell when they make their first decks with Pixie, that's exactly what's going to happen, right? Like that, You know what's going to happen, right? But the thing that I had this, I had this thought, I was like, you know what, I'm going to go... I have a colleague that I work with who is like a uh, like a former professor of statistics. And I almost wanted to take them pixie and show them a bunch of cards and snap and be like, what would be the actual proper like parabola? I'm not a math guy. That would be like the ideal like a number of low cost cards and high cost cards to increase, to have the maximum chances of doing appropriate swaps to make you like have the most reliable effect possible. Like I almost want an actual mathematician to do that work because I ain't doing it. I mean, dude, we've we've seen that with like Blob and stuff, right? We're like, oh, he's okay. He's a pretty good card. He'll get big or whatever. And then we saw over time like, oh man, he gets really big, right? With Pixie, yes, there's the randomness. And to your point, you're going to have to have that, like, formula. Like, we're going to know off the top of our heads in a month. Like, two fours, one three, whatever, right? But Alex Coach, what has me giving her... Uh, I'm leaning more towards the five-star kind of top end, 4.5, four-star. What's leaning me towards that direction is she reminds me so much of Loki. But also, let's just quickly talk about two cards that I think synergistically are going to be busted now we've already kind of hinted at this i believe before when we talked about this i don't know when we talked about this card before in the snapchat but i know we did uh obviously boy the jet ski up let's go yeah Bring where's up. he up where's the where's my jet ski uh i can't find it mobius in mobius is going to be essential in decks for a while you shut down what pixie does which is awesome i mean obviously very important that mobius is going to do that but on top of that if you have that in your pixie deck what's great is it's offensive hardcore if you change your nightcrawler to a dr doom hey no worries it's still a nightcrawler and that's where i think things like control decks where you have a couple great six costs and then you have all these low one cost cards 
is awesome. I mean, you're looking at a one cost Professor X. I, it's going to be wild and having Mobius in there is one of the reasons. But then, Alex, this is where I'm like, okay, that maybe bumps her up a little bit more. <sighs> but what goes with Mobius? What goes with Pixie? Hear me out. I just talked about him. This could be dangerous. And let me tell you why. You have Loki, you have Mobius, you have Pixie. What happens here is you Pixie out. And then if you don't like what happened, and maybe you don't have Mobius, you just Loki your hand. You just you just restart the hand, right? Like you have three chances between Mobius, Loki, and Pixie to have some pop off. It's true. You crazy. Do. You definitely do. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. But like the thing that kind of keeps it in check is like they kind of have to be in your hand. Like if, if Mobius gets swapped and then like, cause Mobius is kind of a safety, like catch all. He's like a safety blanket for it. So if you Pixie on two and Mobius is in your hand and you're like, whoa, I just, everything I'm drawing sucks. You can Mobius on three and make sure that there's no, there's no negative uh, impact. Right. However, if he's in the deck, he might've been swapped to six power. Right. So like, you don't know. Yes. But I feel like if you have like, let's say snow guard, uh, Maria Hill, like some one drops, right. All the six drops. And then all of a sudden you just have Pixie, Loki, Mobius. I feel like that's three different options to really make sure you can at least get yeah. a, a winnable play line for sure. But yes, typically you'll need one of those in your hand, right? Like to really feel yeah. confident in that. I just, I can't stop thinking about how many times I've lost to the peak and how many times having that advantage over my opponent, having a ramp, uh, uh, the raft card, they don't know what it is. I just can see a lot of people losing to, to, to Dr. Doom's that are two cost followed by an Arnim Zola that's a three cost both on turn five putting two more dooms out and filling the board like there's just a lot of crazy things that can happen with Pixie and that's what has me nervous and kind of being on the over hype train because why not I love that call and like it actually reminded me like I don't know if you saw but on Twitter Glenn put out a negative deck that actually I was playing was a ton of fun and it had Loki as like this emergency parachute of like well everything's going bad I never drew Mr. Negative boom Loki right yep. and it, it worked I played I'm like man Loki's actually pretty good here because if you don't get like the nut draw you do have your backup plan and sometimes honestly in snap having a good backup plan is enough to get those cubes right and uh, so yeah pixie's pretty wild and uh i think a good point of conversation here is to talk about i think there's three cards that are actually uh, synergistic in a fun way naturally a lot of talk around uh yellow jacket and wasp for obvious greedy ass reasons but can i throw out like if you're going to use those two is there a chance that Jane Foster could actually make an appearance here? Yeah, I had that on my notes. I had Jane Foster here because I'm like, hey, you know, she's already a five, right? So if she goes to a six, it's like, ah, bummer. But if she goes anything cheaper, you're like, you have the chance to, you know, get her out on three or some BS. And then you pull whatever Wasp and Yellow Jacket ended up switching with. I want to yeah. see the play line. Like, I want to see how many times I end up with one of these. I, I think at the end of the day... I feel like you only have Wasp or Yellow Jacket because then it's like, I don't know, you, they could swap to... It has me nervous. I, we're going to have to see how the, the, the shuffling goes and to your point, like the statistics, right? Like we can't get five, six costs because you know they're going to swap with each other too often. But yes, I understand your point. I, I totally think there could be a deck there where you could get something rolling, maybe even with Thor in there to get even more synergy. Lockjaw, we know has changed. Jane Jaw is probably dead a little bit. But this could restore some of that some more because now we have even more synergistic plays into six cost, right? Like you get the six cost coming out of Lockjaw, but then you have Wasp in there. I definitely could see some synergy in the reemergence of Lockjaw with Jane. This is one of those cards as well. I just want to throw out that I feel like I'd have liked this one to be a season four, uh, series four card. Because I think that it has enough fun potential that I would like to see it in the hands of more players. Um, even if it like completely shatters the meta, becomes like the most powerful deck archetype in Marvel Snap and it has to get tuned down or whatever, okay? Like, fine. But I, I don't know if it'll do that. I think it'll be good. I think there's going to be some really good combinations. But at the very least, I think it's a super fun card. I, I would have liked to have seen it been a little more accessible. Yeah, just on that note, we need to just address. It, it's just disappointing to see that we don't have any Series 4. Like, I feel like having... Having a Series 4 at the minimum, right? It just, it makes everything better in the season. And it's not really a loss on them. And you typically can do it towards a card like this, right? Where it's like, it's a, more of a fun card. You give access it to everybody. We had it for a while and it felt really good. Uh, so, you know, dev team, if you guys are listening, I really think they, they you guys should bring back Series 4, at least for one card. No question. We don't need to see all Series 5, especially in a month like this, where they're all great. And, and, and it just makes it, difficult to decide 
Yeah, this month is actually a banger, and like it's the one thing that holds it back a bit is I feel like a, there's going to be a lot of weeks where a lot of the cards are going to be hyped. Every Tuesday, everyone's YouTube feed is going to be a bunch of hyped videos because these cards are super awesome, right? And like it's just hard. It is so hard to have enough resources to participate each week. Like a free to play player, like I don't know how I don't know how you guys do it. You can't. You just can't, right? I, I, my heart actually aches for you guys. It, it really does because. This month is going to be one of those months where I think that like the inaccessibility of cards might come up, but we know spotlight caches are getting like spotlights are getting more cards into the hands of players. We know that, right? That has been confirmed by the dev team, but still, especially since now we have an added launch the first week of every single season, it's tough. Yeah, no question about it. Hopefully uh, the feedback is loud and clear on their end, but uh, we got a lot more cards to talk about. So we'll move on from Pixie. Obviously we could say more synergy cards like any of the six costs, right? We can just start naming those off. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on to another very appetizing card. One of the best base variants I've seen in Marvel Snap. And that is Mockingbird. And oh boy, guys, Mockingbird. She is a five cost, nine power card. Nine power, Alex. Costs one less for each card you have in play that didn't start in your deck. Alex Kocha. Saying nothing but the star rating. What do you got? I have four, but I was close to dropping another five banger. I was close. This is if I could say the cozy four and a half, I'd even go as close as 4.7. Oh, he's coming. He's coming to the light side, guys. We've done did it. This looks like literally a light side, like Star Wars character card with the background and everything. So I guess it's fitting. Um, yeah, dude. It 4.5 is what I did have too. So I, I had 4.5. Um whew. Let's break it down. I think this is what everybody needs to understand before we go into the synergistic plays, Alex, and why we're both so obviously high on this card. Oh, guys. Um, Brood, Mr. Sinister, Doctor Doom, Squirrel Girl, the Raptors, all of these count. All of these count for Mockingbird. So right off the bat, Brood is taking Mockingbird down to a three-cost card. Just that sentence alone is so funny to me, playing Brood into absorbing man if you guys haven't seen it my favorite deck the last two seasons no question about it has been a patriot deck i just did a video on it and that deck is going to welcome mockingbird perfectly into it, it there's no i think she is a massive card for patriot but that one core aspect alex of having the benefit of multiple token cards game changer buddy my notes literally say in caps ideal patriot card ideal like, honestly it is and uh and it, it really just it's so much value it's crazy and the thing about patriot is you have all these cards that like tend to go really wide like you have sinister you've got squirrel girl you've got uh brood as you've mentioned if you want to go to the abs man like kind of full mysterious uh, greed and like yeah exactly right but you don't have a lot of that like just single file vertical threats you just don't but mockingbird represents that like you're able to say okay hold on hold on we got a lot of power here we got a lot of power there but i just need like a little chunk right somewhere yep. right right in that that brood lane we need a little bit of chalkiness boom right yep. there's a good chance that she's free there's I, literally a good chance that she's I free on a regular a basis great in a deck like chance that. a great chance she's free and it's just again it's just like corvus and discard it's just the deck is doing what it's already doing and then you have this card at access and, and there's so guys I, i've been playing patriot so much that i can tell you firmly confidently there are so many different turns that you'll, you you want to play Patriot, but it's like turn five and you're like, I don't, I don't know. Do I like, do I just play this down though to set up my turn? Six? But now it's like, you're going to have this as this nice little filler card that can kind of fit in there. And not to mention, I, I, we'll have to see, because again, I'm playing that surfer Patriot kind of mixed breed of a deck. The, the thing about it is like even just general surfer at this point, right? Surfer's the same story. You want to have a card you can kind of just like shove in there sometimes. And even just the axis of something like Brood is going to be cool. This is the next card I'm going to bring up is not one you would play in Surfer, but it, her, her possibilities go as far as something even like Shauna. Shauna's pumping down three cards at once, instantaneously giving you a two cost, nine power card. It's, it's crazy. And then like, I mean, even it was in the developer video where I think Ben Broad shouted out Shauna. I think he said Shana, by the way. I was like, wait a minute, what? Hey, hey, <laughs> but hey. What are we doing here? But uh, I, I do agree 100%. And like, I've been looking for a reason to play this card. Cause like, I don't know about you. I always go through my list. I'm like, what are cards no one's playing that I can deck build around? You know, get a little spicy thumbnail, get people excited. And spicy, I look at Shauna yeah. like literally twice, maybe twice, three times a month. And I'm just like, no, no, I'm not doing this again. Like, hey. it's like, you know, I'm not going down that road. But maybe finally 
we have a reason. And Cozy, I like that you bring up Surfer too, because one of my early lists with this card actually has um, a combination of running like uh, your your Nova Killmonger style deck, where you can like you know buff across the board. But if you run Mister Sinister and Brood, and you might be able to bring down Mockingbird enough, we're on turn five, right? Just maybe. You might be able to sneak out like, you know, Mockingbird and a two or a three or something, right? Where that turn five play is kind of awkward. I'm still working on the lines, but I think that it could potentially work there as a really big uh, power play. And so if you if you guys didn't get the chance to watch the video, the, the reason I'm so sold on this uh, and, and why I've been playing Patriot and, and the deck that I've been playing is, first of all, Brain Dead Easy deck. If you have Brood and you have Absorb Man, you can feel confident and snap on that, Alex. But the other thing that deck does better than any deck I have played and why I played it so much towards the top is that it is insane at early priority. And what does Mockingbird do? She instantly gives you more power to establish that priority. And alone, Eliath mixed into that deck is going to just be awesome. Because you have Brood, Absorbing Man, big power. Mr. Sinister, Patriot, to add to that, whatever you need to do there. And now you have Mockingbird to throw on to ensure that turn six, you already know what you need to do, right? So I, absolutely, this is going to be... One of the only times that I do like a direct deck guide not long after, one that I just put out because it's going to be perfect there. Alex, a lot more synergy. You saw me going over Moon Girl. Obviously, we know. Uh, I, I think you quoted the last time. We're always doing double up decks. I mean, come on, though. This is definitely very much a deck that's going to like Moon Girl and, and having free cards there. I think there are better methods, but I think this is a deck you could pull off. I like that you bring that up um, because like it's like, hey, for real this time, Moon Girl, actually yeah. a thing. Uh, my Moon Girl, uh, Corvus, sorry, my Moon Girl Proxima Midnight deck, I was I was so disappointed. I was so disappointed with it. Well, yeah, it didn't, didn't, didn't work, didn't right? work. Yeah, yeah. I tried. I gave it the try, damn it. But what I'll say is that like, yes, I had this like kind of like pen and paper design with like Quinjet, Moon Girl, like we get like some actual like cards down on the board, not just like the zoo like Shauna or anything like that, not Squirrel Girl, the shield, the shield deck. Yep. But it felt so much slower then just like hmm if i just play squirrel girl like it's just so much easier yeah right and if i don't draw into quinjet then everything's so much harder because like in theory like colson should be a beneficiary of this card like it, it's like i kind of see this as being analogous to like what stature is like can i get it cheap enough that even on turn six it's a surprise to drop on nine power yeah you know what i mean like it's nice to play it out early but if it's just free then you can just slam it in there with a devil dinosaur or whatever else you might have. It actually reminds me, um, like, I, I got a lot of comments like, Rox, is, Rox and Hawks is dead whenever Darkhawk got his thing. And and you know what? This, though, reminds me of the, the, the early builds of Rox and Hawks I used to do where I had She-Hulk, Devil Dinosaur, Moon Girl, and Coulson with Coinjet. And then what you can mm -hmm. do there is the She-Hulk's great because it's cheap, right? And it just is going into the double... You know as well as anyone, if you get the She-Hulk left side of your hand, you're feeling like a million bucks, right? Because uh, you can copy that, and then you have the Quinjet down. Coulson also is going to be able to provide that. You got the Devil Dinosaur as a backup, and then you can throw in Mockingbird for that, again, extra little bit of quick power that, may I remind you, if you get two copies of Mockingbird, hot damn, have a good time. That's going to be... Oh, that's going to be insane. And she's nine power, bro. She's nine power. That's under Shang-Chi. Mockingbird is going to be an insanely good card, man. Uh, any other synergies before we move on? And a key note there is that you can actually like Moon Girl Mockingbird and then play a Mockingbird to discount the Mockingbird that's still in your hand because it didn't start in your deck. Ridiculous. So like that's kind of cool, right? But yeah. obviously there's a synergy with Thanos. Yeah. Like the Thanos stones don't start in the deck. But like I had this thought. I was like, man, does Mockingbird even need Thanos? Like do we, does Thanos need Mockingbird? Like are we actually doing this now? Is this, is this the path we're taking? Sadly, yeah. I was actually sad when they called that out. I like, oh my God, come on, read the audience guys. Like Thanos is everywhere right now. Like do we need, we just had a whole season for the guy. Like, do we want to highlight that on the video? Um, yes, because in my opinion, right. I think Hope Summers will fit in there, but also you're already, you just, ugh, Thanos ramps all the time. It has a lot of energy to spare. You're already trying to do the stuff with the stones. Of course, you're trying to play the stones. Mind Stone opening on Thanos is a snap because it's so strong. And now it's a super snap. It's like a done deal if you have Mockingbird. And, and as we know, Thanos and the fives just go together. Like, that's just, that's what they're meant to do. And so this is going to be a massive, massive Thanos card. I know this is a bit random, but I have two more things I want to say before Hit we me. move on to the next card. Uh, one, uh, I can't believe you already have a red Kirby, Kirby Crackle split on this card. Fantastic. Uh, two, <laughs> it, it, this this card reminds me of the art. You brought up the art before. Tell me if I'm wrong, but anybody that knows Half-Life and like Half-Life 2, yeah, this yeah, yeah. looks like, uh, like a, is it City 18? Oh, I can't remember the name of the city. Oh, it's been oh, a no. minute. I'm going to get roasted in the comments Great game, now. great game, but yeah, I, yeah, I haven't played it, it in ages. Mockingbird looks like, like some sort of boss that works there. Like the actual like... Uh, 
like the uh, the foreman what? of the the soldiers of you, uh, the city. When you played Half Life, did you get the orange box or did you just get the game separately? I had bought it separately originally, but then I also bought the orange box. Oh, and, uh, that was so good. I've, I've always liked Half-Life, but like there's like the buggy section in the middle where it's like yeah. two hours of driving a buggy around. And every time I get there, I'm like, no, nah, I can't do this yeah. anymore, man. I drive, just can't. It, it, yeah. it's, it's rough. The orange box is like one of the greatest matches. Like Portal, man. Like, oh, there's just so, oh, so good. So many. What is, like, what is your, what is your like, uh, we, we've talked before about like N64 and stuff, but more like of that age, right? Like orange box, kind of like early 2000s and moving forward. Like what were some like key staple next gen games for you? Oh man, that my gaming career started with Warcraft 3. Uh, mm, I played okay. Warcraft 3 like ep like really, really competitively. Uh, Warcraft 3 Frozen Throne. I was in high school at the time. I was in the top 50 in the world or in NA, not the world, in NA. And um, and it was like, it was what I played. Like I used to like literally train. Like I would get a custom game that was like a micromanagement trainer. Yeah. And I would have like hockey set up on my keyboard. And like I would practice micromanaging as fast as I could. Because at the time, anybody that's like old like me would know that like APM, actions per minute was how you flexed right what's your apm bro like that's what people oh, ask all the like, time yeah yeah yeah. right yeah. oh but, like, yeah i literally sure. worked on improving my apm maybe that's why my hands don't work anymore <laughs> dude i funny enough so it, i had like a bunch of different stages of like my gaming and, and i i feel like everyone had uh, people that call themselves gamers had like a competitive edge of gaming and it was either like mobas like there's different games that you could go into and, and for me uh i was i was a cod boy back in the day like i i went full on it i actually paid uh, I, I got a new Ford back I mean, kind of like in my college days, but I, I just completely paid for most of that through Major League Gaming, matchups, Search and Destroy. We had a team that was like the, ins I mean, I was an absolute monster in, in the old days of that. Then moved to kind of Overwatch, but I always had like competitive games, Alex. And then I had like these single player games I could get lost into, right? Like Little Big Planet I played, a lot of Zelda, a lot of obviously uh, Oblivion Skyrim. So outside of Warcraft, what was like a single player game you would entrench yourself in? Oh man, it would be Mass Effect. It would okay. have to Ooh, be Mass two, Effect. Like two, the Mass one Effect or three. trilogy. The whole trilogy. Like that I love the story. I've read the books. I have Ooh. I have books about Mass Effect somewhere behind me. Like I love it, the art of Mass Effect. Um, I was so invested in that that uh, that game. Like I remember like it was the first game that I would play. I remember number three, like I actually like cried. I was like I was like in like university and I'm crying oh, yeah. watching like a video game cinematic because like it's I'm talking about Thane by the way anybody that's wondering about Mass Effect the the, the Thane brought scene me back brought me back me, right I'm like no <laughs> right it's like it's just unbelievable that was the single player game that really shaped uh, my career Mass Effect two was like probably oh man right up there with Kotor Knights of the Old Republic like those two games just like Ooh. blew me away man and Witcher three if you haven't done Witcher three you would very yeah. much enjoy it you okay hey, another like. Just, mm, chef's kiss chef's kiss again I read all, all the books too i okay. read all the books oh dude, who'd you pick on the witcher who was your gal um i was uh always on the side of i can't remember her name now oh my gosh a redhead the redhead one come on you got it no i i, I can't remember don't put me on the spot i, I was not a yennefer gamer i'll Isn't tell you it that. trish is it trish Oh, it's Trish Marigold. Yes, yeah, yeah. Trish Marigold. Yeah, I was like, I was, I, a Trish, Marigold I was game. Trish too. So yeah, I remember uh, there was an opening scene that I, uh, I unfortunately had like uh, my like wife like walk in and it was on the cut scene. I was like, oh, no, nothing, nothing to see here. But uh, yeah, there was, which was a fantastic game. But anyway, man, we digress. Mockingbird, going to be a really good card. A lot of cards that work with it. Clearly Thanos, Brew, Patriot. That's where it's going to be the best. Excited to see uh, where that comes in. And, and I would say this very much so. Hope Summers and her are just core cards moving forward into a lot of decks. Pixie has the chance to be like a big boom card of her own archetype in a sense. So kind of different strokes for different folks, uh, as they say. Um, but definitely very strong card. We both love Mockingbird. We've got a couple more cards left, though, Alex, to talk about. Next is Cannonball. And Cannonball, a lot of people have been waiting for Cannonball to come out. He's a five cost, eight power card. Just got updated. Is the blob killer guys blob killer on reveal move the highest powered enemy card at that location if cannonball cannot move it he destroys it with a rock my god it's gonna be awesome man what do we think of star ratings for cannonball i started at three and i've talked myself up to four but this is one of the ones i'm less sure about yeah. um how it actually plays um this card first of all the buff i think actually makes a difference and uh 
I think this is a major change. The ability to uh, have like a semi a semi targeted effect is really important because we didn't have that before. That's a significant text change, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's where I lean cozy. I'm not sure about this one. I'm not as hot. I think the other cards are better, yeah. but this still has the chance to be legit. Yeah. So it's one of those effects that are insanely strong. And it is tough to evaluate. I had him at a 3.5. I was right there with the 4 too. Like, it was close. The reason I'm going more towards the, the mid route, even with the update, and it's great. It's really good. Don't get me wrong, guys. It's a cracked ability. But he's very meta-dependent, right? Like, if we had this Kitty Pride, a lot of cheap one-cost cards, like, he does lose his sting a ton, right? Like, obviously, in, in Thanos deck, even, it could be tough. We've seen that before. Like, if Kyra comes out, like, good luck. He's going to be a Gambit who doesn't do anything. But then he's awesome against the blob right but then people have kyra in those decks so that's where I, I, he's meta dependent but then if it is obviously like a devil dinosaur something like that i really like it strong effect people i've seen compared him to legion i think that's a, not a great take because legion can literally change everything at once whereas this is more linear he's five costs which we know is tough i'm not sure i'm not sure i'm not saying he's bad i'm not saying he's he's gonna be cracked I just think he is going to be interesting to, to play around with. Right away for me, synergistically, I kind of like the idea of doing something like Grandmaster for the cheap and having the ability to activate such a strong ability twice. Yeah, but like, okay, so the old, there was the old text that if he, when he did move them, they always had a rock. But on this one, they have to be destroyed to put a rock there, correct? Yes, but he would, it was a random card. This is the highest powered card, which to the, the point... Uh, that I said earlier, like there's just going to be so many different cards and it's on turn five. So they maybe don't have the six cost out yet. That's where it's going to be weird for me. Sure. But is this like a kingpin card? Like, why are you moving the card? You know what I mean? Like, it's sure it's disruptive, but it's not like the old kingpin where you move a card and it gets blown up. What? Like, it's still on the board. Exactly. And like, let's be honest, kingpin was a lot of fun, but moving cards can win you games, but it can also lose you games, right? Like you... <laughs> The devil dinosaur all of a sudden that you didn't want is going to shift. Now, it's a bit more targeted. Maybe this is more of a turn six card because then you get a bit more of an idea of where things are going to play or maybe they haven't played in a lane, right? And then you can easily just win a lane with Cannonball if you go second. Yeah. I, he's got a lot of potential, but I just compared to all the other cards and all the plug and play potential, I see more there than with Cannonball. And I want to be proven wrong with him, right? 100% I agree. Like, this is the one I'm most hesitant on. Uh, like, the next one's absolute fire. But before we move on to the next one, there is a card that came to mind specifically okay. when I was looking at Cannonball, especially the new text. And I was like, th th this text has to be applied to Spider-Man 2099 next patch, right? Like, we call on this right now that Spider-Man 2099 is going to destroy the highest power card once it moves. I hope so, right? Like, that definitely feels... I mean, if they're up to code and they do their one move update per... Uh, OTA or card back. There's always like one in there nowadays. So, you know, we got the Vulture and now. Uh, I, I could see that. That's actually, uh, man, if we get Elsa in 2099, both getting that little bit of love, definitely cards yeah. that could, could need it. But uh, yeah, listen, I, I think Cannonball uh, could be cool. I, I think he could definitely be cool. He, he has a lot of uh, play lines that are possible with him, but we'll have to see uh, if he's going to be in junk. And where exactly is his home going to be? Kind of reminds me of Arrow. Great card, but where do you put it? That's the main thing, right? Uh, now we go to our last card, and this is the one where I was giving out a lot of five cost card. I didn't know what to do, so I'll just kick us off, buddy. This is a five star card, no question. It's War Machine, and I couldn't be more excited for a iconic character. Not to really have an ability that has anything to do with him in my mind, but be an iconic card in Snap. War Machine is the card of the month for me personally. We've seen Jeff, and here we go. He's a four cost six powered card on reveal until the end of your next turn nothing can stop you from playing cards anywhere alex uh, alex what what is your what is your star rating on this one i leaned towards four okay. but like if i could have done a 4.5 i would have for me i was not I, didn't, I wasn't brazen enough to go five on this one but I can see why. I like, listen, this card, this effect is unbelievably powerful. If you think about a Jeff as a 2 3 that just does this, and yeah. it's like one of the best cards in the game, right? Like, honestly, it is. This card definitely has incredible potential. <sighs> so I haven't given out a five. I had Pixie as a possible, like, five star potential just with the pop off of Loki or whatever. This is, this is my five. Uh, this is the one that I'll die on the hill. I think everybody should get this card. Is my, is gonna be probably my opinion. 
it reminds me uh, of not only like Iron Lad and stuff like that, but just has that ability that no one else has. And there's so many different things you can do with this. It, it's stat line is insane. It, it having six power just it, to me is silly. Uh, truly kind of crazy. It's going to want to be in a lot of decks. So much synergy to break down. So let's go ahead and get right to it, guys. But this is my card of the month. Uh, and and listen, Alex and I, I think we're, we're pretty fair. We, we will definitely dump on cards if we think they suck. We've had a couple months now where we're, we've been pretty low on a couple cards coming out. This month was a tough one. There was a lot of great cards coming out. And, and synergistically, Alex, oh man. Uh, guys, Infinite can be played anytime on turn six, even if you skip with War Machine if he's played earlier out. You can also do things like Giganto. You can play Ebony Maw. These cards that have since been locked can now be played. Hey, how about Century? You can play them wherever you want to now. It's massive. It's massive, bro. It's massive. Buddy, you play War Machine on top of Hope Summers, yep. and you play Infinite. Yep. Like, it's beautiful. It's a match made in heaven. Hey, how about Hope Summers on three, War Machine on four, Infinite on five, Taskmaster, Arnim Zola on six, GG Gamers. I mean, that, but that is one play line, just one that's cracked. Like, just one play line of many that War Machine's going to open. Guys, you can play in any location. Crimson Cosmos, Big House, doesn't matter. Sanctum Centaurum, throw a Galactus on there. They didn't play a card. You know they didn't play a card. Like, this is going to be insane. You're turning all of your cards into Jeff, which in is sadly is going to take Jeff's cost down because you immediately have a card that can play in a Professor X, play in the Flooded Lanes, do that kind of thing. War Machine is just going to be incredible, man. In Zabu, out of Zabu. What else do you love with him? Uh, it's funny because like when we were originally talking about Hope Summers, like I wanted to bring up War Machine because yeah. like I was going through all the fours, like which are the ones that you just want to play on turn four that'll have an immense impact for that six drop that wants to go anywhere or whatever, right? And it's War Machine, right? Uh, another card is, and I'm not even sure of this interaction, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that Ebony Maw might be playable with so, war machine so yeah I, just, uh, I opened up with that yeah so infinite and ebony maw together can be you get, they can both oh, be played wherever and I giganto better obviously no you're good <laughs> and giganto and century these cards that have been hey crossbones crossbones you don't have to win location could crossbones actually be playable maybe oh, i didn't even think of crossbones dude, this is an actual crossbones buff yep yeah, literally dude any i feel like any of those lockdown harder restriction cards are all of a sudden feeling great and, and you again you're getting six power with it. it he to me is the biggest candidate on the list to get nerfed so that's the only thing i'm scared about like i think hope summers has that uh, that opportunity potentially like if we want to talk about in the future but war machine just has me nervous he could suck i don't know four cost is a lot i get it guys but i just i don't see it i don't see and then like here's some other here's the, the think about restriction cards okay that's where i went first hey how about electro what can Jeff do with Sandman? Both those cards. Know that? Yeah. A War Machine yeah. is going to instantly turn every... Your Electro is fine. You can play as many cards as you want to with Electro now. doesn't matter if you have War Machine. Yeah, but like, the, but he's a four cost. Yes. So like you're actually giving up a little bit of tempo to do that. But you're right, because if you Sandman, right? And then I was like, okay, so you Electro, you Sandman. And then on the next turn, you War Machine Jeff. Because you can play both at once. And then you can just dump your hand. But, I mean, would you even do that? Because your hand's probably just six drops anyway. Like, what are you actually holding? Yeah, it's probably like, it's. Uh, it'll probably either be with Hope Summers. Uh, once again, oh my gosh, it'd be like, what, three different yeah. cards in one deck? Uh, but, or just like the either or scenario. Once again, like, if you don't get one, you can play the other. Feel good about a deck that does two things, you know, potentially. I'm just looking at restriction cards and saying, immediately, you brought up like Hope Summers. My head goes to, okay, if you don't get her, let's go Jean Grey. Your opponent's stuck playing there. You don't have to. Yeah, and what about like, okay, here's another thought. Do you think they buff Professor X in advance of this card coming out? Because you might think to some degree, oh, this counters Professor X, but I actually would dare to say that maybe this can be used offensively with Professor X too. Because yeah. if you just ramp out Professor X and sneak it out with Psylocke or something like that and you whiff on it, you can War Machine. You can get in there and they can't, yeah. right? And you can easily get in there. It's like, oh, oh no, I lost the Pro X lane. You can't play there, but oh, here comes Crossbones. Right? Yeah. It's like... Mm -hmm. So I think there's something notable there. Yeah, Pro X definitely. It, it, for me, uh, I'm, I'm happy that Jean Grey will have the opportunity to, to maybe get more play with Hope Summers and with that. I also think, man, uh, we, we talked about Pro X. 
and, and, and you've mentioned or you've heard me mention control a good amount this uh this this cast here i think if you put it all together and you have this offensive professor x deck you can finally do which is one of my favorite play lines that people just don't play that often but it's cracked but you need the right card draw which is why people don't play it you have storm which we just got this awesome new variant uh we've got storm here that you play on usually turn four to legion on five but now alex you can storm on three war machine on four play your legion on five and you don't need to have that in order you lock down all the locations well that is absolutely disgusting yep. that is a beautiful conversation like i had not, had not thought of that it's, it's cozy just it. you just got war machines getting nerfed cozy just did it hey, it's I, not being released the way it's designed I'm good scared. job cozy i'm you ruined I, everything I have them at five star for a reason man I, I truly think this is the card of the month and it comes out last which is a bummer but definitely no question card of the month guys and those are just kind of the tip of the iceberg i feel like uh on like what we can do with war machine he clearly zabu zabu uh and he's gonna help him out but yeah what card's going to whiff outside of maybe Pixie that's on the downside? And Cannonball is a little suspect, but man, everything else seems absolute fire. As always, let's go ahead and, you know, rank them in order. I think I love doing this to close it out, man. For you, who do you have as the best card of the month? My ordering would have uh, Hope Summer's number one. Okay, so I've got War Machine number one. Who do you have at number two? War Machine. And then, yeah, I would probably join you with, uh, with the Hope Summer's. Okay, number three? Mockingbird. Yeah, no, Bird. <laughs> I, I almost said it like, uh, like uh, what was the guy's name from uh, Breaking Bad? Heisenberg? I almost oh, said yeah. it like uh, Mockingbird. I don't yes. know what the hell I said. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah, three, I would probably go Mockingbird as well. And I think it's funny because Pixie could be one. Like, So it's tough to like yeah. play. But I think then we both go Pixie Cannonball. I agree. Yep. Yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of Cannonball lovers out there that are going to defend it. I think it definitely has a chance to be a better card, but we're going to have to see. So, guys insane month ahead cannot wait as always we have just a really cool uh, uh cards that are going to bring fun bring some spice open up just more archetypes in general bring some back and we're going to be talking about a lot of cool things over on alex's side by looking at our final rankings of the february month where alex and i correct on them where we dead wrong we're going to find out and also give our updated rankings on every card top 10 cards to get in the token shop definitely important series four or five which ones are worth buying the best really hard list to make alex and then the snapchat mailbag as always guys thank you guys so much for joining us if you haven't leave a review it helps us more than you know and, and uh until the next one guys happy snapping